Hey there, Dungeon Crawl fans. Welcome back to Dungeon Crawlers Anonymous. My name is Ron, and today we're going to be kicking off a brand new series on this game, Alter Quest, a cooperative game of fantasy adventure for one to four players by Adam and Brady Sadler. This game just arrived on my doorstep this week. I've been spending the last couple days getting comfortable with it, getting to know it, and now I'm going to be, um, I'm very excited to be getting ready, kicking off a new series for you guys on this game, how to play it, how to get it set up, and, and all that stuff. This first video is going to be a box tour. If you're new to my channel, uh, the way that I do, I don't really do unboxings where I, you know, open the game fresh and show you guys what's inside. There's a million of those out there. This is more of a tour of the game as it's going to be looking like on your shelf. So I've got everything punched. I've got everything organized in the way that I want to do right now. And, you know, this is more of just a, a component overview and just some brief uh, information about the different components. Uh, in the game. So hopefully that's something that's useful to you. In addition, I'll be doing a series or a video on how to set up the game as well as uh, a, a playthrough series on the game itself. Um, that said, let's go ahead and just dig right in. Now, this is the base game. There is a, a number of uh, expansions and other content available. Most of that was done through the Kickstarter. I'm not sure what's going to be available at retail yet. I did kind of get a gameplay all in on the Kickstarter, so I have the expansion, the stretch goals, in the first four kind of hero pack, but we're just going to be looking at the base game. We're just going to be looking at what's this retail game look like. There's a ton of game in here, and, uh, and, and, and while the expansion content is certainly going to be cool, there's a lot of stuff to explore in this, so, um, so yeah, let's just go ahead and take a look. So this is a big box. This reminds me of about the Mansions of Madness box from uh, Fantasy Flight. It's a really large box, and it is mostly stuffed with miniatures. But um, as you guys are going to see, it's got some really nice high-quality components. I'm really pretty happy with it. So right off the top, we've got two books. We've got a rule book and the story guide for the campaign that comes in the base game. Now, when I bought this game, I don't even think I knew that it came with a campaign. Um, I actually got this specifically because I wanted a really good one-off dungeon crawler. I have lots of games that are campaign-based, that are legacy-based, that are going to have lots of scenarios and character growth and all that other stuff. So I got Alter Quest because I wanted a really good sort of like, hey, let's just play a dungeon crawl game, let's just knock it out, um, kind of one-off game. I'm super pleased pleased that it came with the campaign. There's actually two. There's another one that came in one of the expansions. And um, I'm excited to see what this is. And it does have character growth and monsters get stronger and some other cool stuff. But um, so far I've only played, you know, one shot scenarios and they have been, they've been exactly what I've wanted. Um, but yeah, the rule book is, is pretty nice. It's all full color. There are, it starts with um, a bunch of different kind of layout graphics, which is an interesting way to start off your rule book um, just by showing you basically how these card um, what the anatomy of these different cards and stuff are going to be. Um, I do like it. It's a nice reference. The rule book overall is, is pretty good. It's kind of one of those games where I would recommend you just give a full, thorough review of the rule book or watch a how to play series, maybe like mine, hopefully coming up soon. Um, but, you know, there aren't a ton of complex rules here. This is certainly not as complicated as some of the dungeon crawl games that are out there right now. But um, this did take me a couple of read throughs and really it didn't really click with me too well a few of the things until I actually got to start playing. Overall though, I'm pretty happy with the rule book. These call outs, um, while typically I feel like in a rule book a, a section like this is like ancillary information, these are really important. So make sure you're reading everything when you go through. Skipping to the end, the only thing that I wish was in here, there's a really nice quick reference on the back for your turn summary, act phase, hero actions, and a test procedure. There is no index, and I do wish there was an index. It is a 27-page rule book. It's not, in, it's not terribly long, but I, wouldn't, I would have preferred to have an index. However, there are certainly worse rule books out there. This one's definitely serviceable. Now, the Anna of Luxon story guide, I haven't really looked at this at all. We'll just look at the very first page. You can kind of see what it looks like. It's going to be, again, high quality, you know, full color. There's some call outs for different pieces of information, um, lots of story text to read and explore. Um, and it looks like fun. Yeah, I'm excited. Let's see. There are, uh, let's see here. Looks like there's a bunch of um, specific uh, entries you can see as well as um, six, it's a six chapter um, campaign. So that's all I was looking for there. Next we have the board. And um, the board, if you haven't seen it, is very uh, reminiscent of Hero Quest. Let me just open up maybe um, most of it. It is, it is a six panel board, so here's four of the panels. There's two more that are gonna come out here. Um, it's very reminiscent of Hero Quest. Um, anytime I show anybody the, a picture of this game and play, they're like, oh, is it kind of a HeroQuest remake? And I would say this game, 
uh, is nothing like Hero Quest at all, except it has this board and it has um, furniture tile, uh, you know, mi miniatures that are pieces of furniture that you're going to put out. Other than that, I would not say that this, and I guess that it's a, it's a, it's a fantasy adventure game. Other than that, I would say this game is significantly more complicated than Hero Quest. And um, personally, I'm enjoying it more than Hero Quest. But don't get this if you're looking for a replacement for Hero Quest, um, just because of the way that the uh, the board has been um, has been designed. Personally, I really like it because digging around for dungeon tiles all the time not always the most fun, and uh, it's a really nice, thick, high quality board. Next. Um, if you were getting the game for the first time, there'd be a bunch of tile sheets, uh, token sheets. But like I said, I've already got everything organized. And I really like the organizer that this game came with. So first you can see here we've got a, um, we have a uh, miniature tray. These are nice vacuum, vacuum formed miniature trays with lids. Um, and the miniatures, honestly, um, are quite nice for uh, for board game miniatures. I, I don't think I can see why this company went ahead and started doing um, some more Kickstarters for miniatures. They just finished a horror themed miniature Kickstarter. I actually got this game through the fantasy. They did like a series of fantasy games or for fantasy miniatures, and you could get Alter Quest through it. Um, I missed the original Kickstarter, so that's how I ordered those. Anyhow. Miniatures are really nice. These light blue ones are your heroes. These kind of um, greenish gray ones are the features, and these darker gray ones are enemies. Um, here's, you know, a very large enemy miniature. This is, uh, sorry, this is Brox, I think. He's like the frogkin villain. He's pretty cool. Um, overall, I'm pretty happy with the miniatures. I think they look nice. Um, there's, uh, you know, the hero miniatures are, are quite... They're not heroic scale, I would say. They're a little more realistic proportionally, which I do like. Um, and yeah, there's two whole trays of miniatures. I don't think I'll go through and show you all of them. Um, instead, you know, you can just get an idea. Now, obviously, this is mostly enemies here. Um, there are frog-type folks in the first one, and then we've got, like, pigmen here. Um, they're pretty cool. Uh, and then... You've got some gargoyles and some undead um, and all kinds of cool stuff. And then, of course, you've got doors, tons and tons of doors. Now, I did think these doors would open. I don't know why I thought that, I guess, because it kind of looks like they would. Um, they do not. They're, they're just molded this way, but they're still really nice, and they look, they look great on the table while you're playing. So, overall, um, some boxes of really nice miniatures. And I'm actually storing all the tokens underneath the miniature trays. Um, this isn't my favorite storage solution. I'm not a big fan of Ziploc bags full of tokens, but um, I haven't gotten around to designing a 3D printed storage unit or, or downloading somebody else's design. I'm sure there will be lots of those available soon. Um, so right now I'm just kind of doing this. We'll go over what the tokens look like in just a second, but um, first we can talk about this card tray. So the game also comes with this card tray and all of these nice divider cards. So you're going to be pulling out all these decks of cards and organizing them by type. So we've got heroes. The base game comes with four. Cedrin, Rowan, Marine, and Quella. You've got quests here. These are all the different quests that you can uh, embark on. So we've got the cleansing, the escape, the hunt, the rescue, the search, and the showdown. And then you have three threat types to start with. The frocks. The Raglanders, which are like the pig folks, and then the Thralls, um, which I think are like a kind of vampire, seem very vampire themed. And then there are three villains. Um, Bulks the Belch Lord, who is the, uh, is the frog villain. We've got Gert, who's the Raglander villain. And then we've got uh, Winona, who is the sort of vampire um, Thrall villain. And then we've got altar cards. Each one of these is going to be a different altar that you might encounter in the game. Um, for example, here is the unstable altar. They all have, you know, a different color and then a different kind of theme with one, you know, how the overall game every time they get activated by the quest phase and then stuff that you're um, each, each one has a different type of kind of a power that you can use with those altar rune dice. So we'll get into all that later, but um, this game is their claim to fame with this game is replayability I think um, is kind of like it's very modular and so far I feel very impressed with the uh, with the modularity so we've got some ally cards 
We've got some enemy upgrade cards. Those are for the campaign. We have some equipment cards, which I believe are also for the campaign features. So these are the different, um, oh, that's the altar card. Let's see if we can find a different one. So here's the alchemy desk, which, you know, if that comes up in the game, um, that's the feature that would go in the room. You get out that alchemy miniature that goes with it. Looks really nice. Um, and when you have all this stuff out on the table, gosh, it sure looks cool. I definitely want to paint these too, just for that extra pizzazz. We've got lurkers. These are kind of like one-off monsters that might show up. Um, and then the Out of Luxon campaign cards, which are for the, for the story of Out of Luxon. There's a few other things, the campaign pool and the journal, which are part of that campaign. And then interestingly, I don't know if this was a goof for my, my, um, copy or if they just didn't make a, maybe they just didn't make a header card, you know, a, a divider card for the search cards. But anyway, these search cards are for, they're full of potions and things that you can find while you're exploring the dungeon. And then some, uh, character turn and sort of monster or enemy threat, villain, and quest turn um, reference cards for the players. So, and the cards are nice. They're high quality. Um, they're not super thick. They're not linen finish. Um, the art is very vibrant and uh, I like it. It's really nice kind of high fantasy art. It's not, um, you know, super unique. It's kind of your standard fantasy theme, but that's okay. I, th I think they, they look nice. Um, without getting in the way of himself in terms of the sort of the UI of the cards. So when you're sitting down to play this game, you know, you're going to choose which hero you want to play. You're going to choose which type of quest you're on. You're going to choose which type of threat you want to face and which type of villain you want to fight. You're also going to randomly determine which altar you're going to be facing. Now, the villains don't have to go with their threats. For example, you don't have to necessarily fight Bulks the Belch Lord with the frocks. You could do um, Winona if you wanted with the frocks. So you can see how when you, especially when you add in some expansions, but even this base game, there's a ton of variability here in terms of all these different um, card types and, and how, that, how they kind of contribute to the game. Finally, there's a bunch of tokens in here. Um, nothing too special. Again, I think the design on these is actually nice because it's not over the top. It's just, it's really easy to just determine what the different tokens are. So these are threat tokens. Um, each villain um, or each threat uses threat tokens in a different way. So the um, frocks will poison you with these, um, reducing your effectiveness of your healing. I haven't tried the other villains yet, so I don't know how they'll be used, but those are threat tokens. We've also got quest tokens here. So these um, are typically going to be used to track your progress on whichever quest you're doing. These are action tokens. They're double-sided, so one side is kind of lit up and the other side is dark. And this is just every player is going to get three of these, or every hero is going to have three of these to track their actions for their hero turn. We've got armor tokens that help you absorb incoming damage. Um, we have a number of kind of ally tokens or character tokens. These are these could come up as lurkers. They could come up as allies in different adventures. Um, if you, I believe the stretch goals for the Kickstarter included um, some miniature versions for these, but these are perfectly reasonable. I, I don't need miniatures for all this stuff. Standees and, and art is fine. These are supply tokens. They represent all kinds of different things, just standard gear that your character might have. You can use them to rest and heal. You can use them to roll extra hero dice. They're very useful. We've got a gaggle of ones and fives for tracking damage. Some trap tokens for different types of traps that might show up in the game. We've got some search tokens here. These help you designate which areas of the board you've searched already and how many times looking for search cards and supplies. Um, these basically make it harder and harder to search as you pile more of them up. Got your focus tokens here. These are used um, for turning uh, basically partial successes or potential successes into successes on those hero dice. Um, I really like the, the dice system in this game. It feels very fun and positive to play. It feels like you're always kind of moving forward. Even if you fail at something, you're typically going to get at least one or two of these guys. And finally, these are progress tokens, I believe. They can be used for mar um, marking progress if you're trying to disarm a trap, if you're working on a quest, if you're working on experience, leveling up. There's a whole bunch of different things these can be used for. They're in denominations of one and five as well. Finally, we just have a couple more things left. We've got some uh, base um, rings here where you can put them around different monsters to match them. 
So those are nice. They're very easy to put on. They're really, um, they're kind of pliable. They're not like hard plastic. Really like these. Those ones that are, I think Midara um, came with these as well. And they're really stiff. They're a lot harder to get on. These are really nice. So good job there. And then lastly, almost, <laughs> we have um, two kinds of dice. We have the hero dice here in this really nice blue. And then we have the rune or altar dice here in this black. And it's kind of a marbled black. It's, I'm, I'm sure that it, um, I'm not sure that it will come across at all. Um, it's very subtle and through the bag is even more subtle, I'm sure. But they, they have like a bit of a gray marbling to them. And these blue dice are just this nice translucent blue. Um, you know, we got successes. We got, uh, these are the focus results. And then this um, rounded one here is a critical success. Really nice dice, high quality, fun to chuck. And uh, yeah, you don't need a billion of them, but you will be, you will be throwing dice. And lastly, you have the stair token, which you place on the board to indicate where you entered. One thing that's kind of cool is you get to decide anywhere on the board you want to enter. We just say, this is our first room and you start from there. So there's your entrance token. Well, that's it guys. That's pretty much what's in the box. Um, there's quite a bit of stuff here. Uh, in my opinion, some really nice miniatures, um, a really good high level of replayability for the game in, in these cards, nice storage solutions. I'm really, I'm really pleased when a game comes with a really nice insert like this. Um, there definitely is not enough room in here to add the expansion content. Um, however, I believe the stretch goal box came with a very similar tray like this. So I'm going to use the two trays. Maybe one will be heroes and quests and the others will be threats and other stuff. Not exactly sure how I'm going to organize all of it. Right now, like I said, all I've got is the base game set up because that's all I really need. I don't need to, um, I don't need to play all the expansions just yet. Anyway, I think that's probably going to do it for this uh, this box tour. Not too much to, sh to talk about in this one. Next episode of this series, we'll be actually show I'll be showing you how to get the game set up. We'll be doing a setup for two players. This game is fully sellable, which is really cool. You can play it with one hero, um, one player playing one hero, which I really appreciate. And it feels doable. Like it, it, it's hard, but it doesn't feel uh, impossible to succeed. Um, but we'll be we'll be showing you with two players just to just to make it um, you know a little more just to show a little more of how that setup works. So yeah, we'll see you next time for that. Hey guys, thanks so much for taking the time to watch this video. I really appreciate it. Um, I hope you enjoyed this box tour. I know this format's a little different than other unboxing videos. Um, I hope this is interesting. I hope it's, I kind of think that this is a little more interesting to me than seeing what the game looks like when you first buy it. I guess there's that dopamine hit of what is it like to open the box. But this is more like, what is it like to open the box if I own the game? You know, what's it gonna look like in, in my house? <laughs> so that's really all I was going for. Um, please leave a comment if you have any questions. And yeah, guys, until next time, stay safe out there in the dungeon, okay?